Uh, we may probably uh, get started. My name is Sergey Chabotarov. I work at the uh, microcloud Ingram on uh, Novosibirsk. Today I would like to share my experiences, my friends' experiences, how we use a distributed uh, system of uh, uh, story, data storage for testing and development uh, within the framework of our project. For, to start with, I would like to introduce into our context what we are busy doing. We uh, develop audio automation a product. It is a business host a cloud provider uh, automation. The uh, f final customer comes to a, a web shop. He wants to buy a few mailboxes, uh, a PS, a domain. Everything is wrapped into one subscription. Money is paid. And uh, our product, Odin, Odin Automation, uh, does uh, the rest of things. We have a typical product installation. Management node, we, uh, we do billing uh, nodes which uh, store the uh, service. Exchange, a DNS, Apache server where the uh, site is installed. Accordingly, our typical installation, we are, uh, we've been testing a few Linux containers and a few virtual Windows machines. We have our own uh, server room. It uh, contained uh, a machine pool, virtuosos, and depending on the uh, uh, memory amount and how old the machine was, uh, several or very many installations uh, were contained there. We tested them for, for bug research to demonstrate uh, uh, products to VIP clients. <coughs> A storage has an each server. Please raise your hands. Uh, who knows what uh, knows what a uh, massive array is? Array uh, raid is. Then I'll briefly describe it. Uh, the most popular uh, raid array configuration is uh, array aid. Uh, they are intermittently one big file may be distributed this way to ensure. High, higher performance because uh, two disk operations uh, can be run concurrently. Uh, another uh, popular uh, is uh, RAID 1. Uh, RAID 5 is like uh, RAID uh, 0. There's intermittence, but also an additional chunk, which is a control amount of the previous uh, three. If uh, the array has uh, 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 three disks. If any uh, disk fails, its contents will be restored under the uh, rest of the uh, array. How the RAID is uh, uh, done? Uh, RAID uh, 10 is a combination of RAID 1 and RAID 0. Two uh, RAID 1 arrays were uh, they are united in uh, uh, RAID 0 massive. We had uh, a RAID 1 for the main virtuoso uh, system and a RAID 0 for virtual uh, machine images and containers. Motivation was uh, that we didn't want to reinstall uh, the uh, system. Uh, RAID, no, uh, RAID 0 is, uh, is not a pity to uh, uh, lose and everything seems to be okay. Its performance is uh, okay, everything looks perfect until it fails. It uh, goes on for a few years, uh, the disks were comparatively new and then there was our nervous colleague uh, contacting us and saying that something is wrong with the server, my installations do not work, let's see what's happening. Uh, we follow our monitoring and see that our stripe is dead. We say, dear colleague, sorry but our RAID uh, uh, is out of service. We can't, we can't uh, restore it, he's surprised. I start uh, explaining about performance. He says, dear colleagues, for two days 
I've spent two days to uh, configure my installation. Uh, we can only uh, say we are sorry once, uh, once again, and we started thinking, thinking that the situation deserves changing, maybe looking at other options like uh, uh, RAID 5. Experienced administrators uh, s told us right away that once uh, we are concerned with this thing, even a RAID 5 will not uh, save us, because let's imagine that again a disk uh, uh, fails, we try to res uh, restore it. Uh, we are not recommended to write anything on the, on the array. Uh, any businesses are stopped, which depend on it, especially if uh, the amount is uh, large, it can take half a working day, even a whole working day. Then administrators uh, told us to cross our fingers and sit without uh, breathing because anyone can happen uh, during a uh, raid array rearrangement for example <coughs> for example uh, here it might seem nothing serious uh, very trivial but it can have ca catastrophic aftermath especially during uh, rearrangement because uh, uh, old uh, soft can uh, uh, react uh, in a strange way. It can be helpless to read. Uh, you'll have to take uh, a toolbox trying to uh, restore the data to save at least anything. The worst events usually happen at the wrong time. A controller may overheat uh, when there is a rearrangement and uh, it will uh, destroy against your uh, RAID. Firmware uh, glitches, why it happens during rearrangement? Because during normal situations, some parts of the disks uh, are used frequently, some are not uh, used, but during rearrangement, they are all regularly uh, uh, read. In case of uh, uh, RAID 5, all the disks, not one disk. Accordingly, uh, during uh, uh, RAID operation, there are high risks involved. Uh, in some cases, catastrophic aftermath, math, like uh, losing all the uh, data. Even uh, if everything is okay, it takes a lot of time. Our clients are not very happy, uh, which is why uh, we looked in the side of uh, uh, distributed uh, data uh, storage. First of all, hot swap. We remove old one, uh, insert a new one. The uh, system uh, gets healed all by itself uh, to ensure uh, uh, the same performance like uh, with case of RAID. Uh, the distributed uh, uh, data storage uh, system is that uh, there are no amount uh, limitations. We can extend our disk space uh, f as much as we want. New plus has exceeded uh, protection against uh, disk failure, server, failures, arrays, or even data center failures. Distri distributed, one more interesting aspect is that the distributed data storage systems, uh, disks of uh, different uh, uh, size can be used. Like in RAID 0, all the disks uh, must be identical, otherwise it doesn't work. <coughs> Accordingly, uh, we have opted for Virtuoso storage. We were in one uh, uh, company with uh, uh, Virtuoso uh, creators. We have opted for it. I would like to explain how it is uh, made because uh, many data storage systems are like it. How, how does it work? We have uh, a multitude of computers united in a, a cluster. Disk space is logically united. And again, we have chunks logical information portions which are distributed and each chunk has several replicas a simple coping replication no control uh, amounts like uh, in RAID 5 the cluster members have several roles to play uh, first uh, metadata so, uh, 
servers, they store information about uh, what chunk uh, uh, stores what. There are chunk servers and customers who use the uh, uh, disks, uh, clients and uh, chunk servers are of, uh, most frequently the same computers. Important configuration parameters are normal replicas and minimum replicas. Minimum replicas uh, determines when the operation is over, when until two replicas are written. System fright, it won't come back. And then the uh, system uh, gets a normal uh, replica uh, amount when it works. Failure domain. You can set uh, by default host. The same, the same uh, chunk replicas uh, will be uh, stored at different uh, hosts. Um, it may be set as disk, but it's not recommended. We can set a, a tree-like uh, structure, uh, distribute them by rows, and say Rex that different uh, uh, that different checks get to uh, different uh, uh, ranks or uh, rooms. You may distribute them even geographically for storage. Uh, an interesting uh, option: uh, storage tiers organization, organizing a few uh, storage classes. Some servers uh, uh, may be uh, arranged into hot storage others to uh, usual uh, cold storage, storage yeah, different uh, machines depending on their purpose will be stored either in hot or cold storage. Uh, network topology. We have usually, servers usually has one network, but uh, for good performance it is recommendable uh, to separate uh, one physical network uh, computer to distribute computer ports for application, uh, registration, communication, uh, or backnet uh, network. And others uh, communicate uh, on front net. Virtuoso storage has a possibility when we achieve one uh, gig, gigabyte, and, and we don't have uh, 10 gig equipment that is quite expensive. We can organize so-called network bonding when several physical cables uh, are stuck into one computer are considered as logically one. And we have achieved performance of uh, two and a half uh, giga gigabits. Other solutions. My report is not uh, uh, advertising of uh, a, a paid uh, service, I will show for comparison other solutions. First of all, let's buy a separate big unit, uh, put lots of disks there, set and let it work. Uh, the simplest solution, quite a stupid solution, I must admit. The first thing I found, Huawei uh, produces ocean store uh, storage, it has a lot of uh, racks, 16 terabyte of useful uh, area for 230,000 rubles. We needed 80 terabytes, we had to buy more than 1 million Russian rubles. Virtuoso storage, you'll have to pay five times uh, as little if you want to buy one. And if you are reluctant to pay at all, there is a popular system, Ceph system, it is very much like Virtuozo, and it is free of charge, open. I, I would like to show a few uh, differences between Virtuozo and Ceph. First of all, our uh, use options. We used uh, uh, version 6, which can be only used as an installable system, especially used for uh, optimization for a virtual machine or uh, uh, images and containers. Version uh, 7 uh, includes ISCSI target and object storage for Amazon. All the three options are there. An interesting dif difference is that how junks are placed in uh, clusters. Virtuozo does it uh, very much in an automated way by configuring 
failure, failure demand parameters and storage tiers. Meta data services uh, servers use the entire cluster as one space and distribute uh, them as they like it. They do uh, loading ba balancing and other things. In Ceph, it's uh, more complicated than that. You have to determine manually uh, placement groups, uh, determine uh, uh, master and sl master disk then distributed uh, uh, along slave disks. On the other hand, Ceph has uh, an automatic uh, uh, option, which Virtuoso uh, doesn't. Caching system, like uh, TIA storage in Virtuoso. And SSD uh, is a hot storage, and Ceph understands that this chunk is uh, used uh, suspiciously uh, uh, often. Let's place it to hot storage. It boosts its performance. When uh, demand for this information falls, it is removed to cold storage. Virtuoso doesn't have it. There you'll have uh, to determine it uh, uh, manually. Uh, what to be placed to hot, to, to cold storage. Data caching. It maintains performance at a proper level. In Virtuazo, uh, logs are placed to SSD and then distributed among chunk servers. Uh, Ceph includes it too. It also has cache tiring, as I said. And uh, there is uh, primary affinity, which is not a very recommended uh, thing. Uh, distribution between uh, master and uh, slave. Uh, what did uh, uh, we mean to achieve? Failures, accidents, the simplest case, a uh, disk failure. Case of uh, a RAID, uh, rearrangement, RAID array. In case of distributed data storage, uh, uh, customers are served continuously during replication. Usually, a common operation uh, performance is not affected, and uh, a disk uh, may be dead. Uh, people even fail uh, to notice it because uh, the system restored it uh, through other clusters. And only after a week, uh, administrators uh, saw on his monitor what happened. We had another case, uh, server failure. If uh, a motherboard is burnt, uh, memory failed, if it happens on a demo day for your client, it is a real catastrophe because uh, you have too little uh, time uh, uh, left to store everything in case of they are, these things are stored in a local uh, cloud, in a cluster, uh, they must be uh, raised after 10 minutes uh, after all the system services uh, are loaded, your client uh, uh, finishes his uh, her cup of tea and everything is done in the mind. What other uh, interesting advantages we have? Transparent uh, HW server servicing. So, for example, you have a server and there are some installation which everybody uses um, and if you need to update it or maintain it so you have to stay after work on Saturday uh, or do it remotely from home so and you have to do it all when it's not used it has to be switched off normally but here you don't need that so you just transfer uh, the content uh, to the other service and uh, then you just switch it off the server, bring it to the service, it can take up to several days, nobody will even notice that. In the most uh, simple cases, when you just have to update it, then you transfer the content, you don't have to switch off the chunk service, the system will understand that it won't be present for several minutes, but it's not a problem, it will just reboot, it will uh, be switched on, yeah. and that that's okay. I also uh, mentioned already that we can use different sizes of the disks in the system and it helps a lot when, for example, you use some obsolete equipment, uh, some servers, old servers with small 
memory, you don't install a lot of virtuals there, you can't use it, but uh, using it within the distributed storage system, you can use several trays for the disks, you install several disks connected to the system, and then there is a profit, like you increase the disk space by that. Or you can use highly efficient or productive server, uh, for example, if you don't want to spend even part of this capacity to maintain the cluster, you can connect it as a client, use it, and uh, it uses the space, but it's not a chunk server, server itself. Also, there was an extreme case when we had to build a small cluster of two machines, and we needed at least three data servers, So, and uh, then we used the container which was stored outside of the cluster. So, configuration of every cluster is quite flexible, so there are many options how it can be implemented. <coughs> so in brief, uh, serve is free, virtuoso storage is more convenient because the replics can be distributed in a better way throughout the cluster and uh, the maintenance without the interruption of the container's work is maintained when uh, data is transferred from server to server. But also there are some cold and hot issues. So you can choose the system you like, but in, in the most smart system there are some disadvantages, some peculiarities which have to be taken into account duly. For example, uh, usage of uh, VM templates. When you use virtual machines with Windows, you don't want to install um, Windows from the scratch on a clean image, so you prepare it in advance and use it as a template. <coughs> and the virtual storage um, has limited support of these templates. Uh, and if you use the same templates in different cluster components, you will have to copy it for each member of the cluster uh, because you cannot share it. And uh, also VM templates can be used in so-called linked VM configuration. It's when you deploy this or that machine, you don't need to copy many megabytes of the image and then to work with it, you just make a snapshot on the image, on the template, and the virtual machine is built on this snapshot. For example, when we deployed, um, we saved a lot of time, many hours, uh, because earlier it took 40 minutes just to copy the data. Now it takes just one minute to create a snapshot, and then we start doing something useful. <laughs> and uh, also, you have to observe the necessary amount of free space, uh, especially to make transparent maintenance, to cope with blackouts and uh, downtime. But it all depends on the capacity of your disks and configuration. So, but you need some free space. If you don't have free space, uh, you won't have spa uh, place to put your transfer data. Then it will be a problem. Uh, also, uh, regarding SSD disks, first we um, used um, uh, the disks that we had in our cluster, but some of them be behaved in a strange way. For example, controller, yesterday it worked, today BIOS is not uh, uploaded. Or yesterday it was 60 megabytes, and today it's only 8. Or it's uh, identified as an uh, oper operatable one, but it's uh, working slowly or not working at all. When we started to use SSD serv uh, servers, we stopped having these problems. The only problem if is that if it is broken, then all the disks where you had chunk service, you have to reinitialize, so you lose the data. Of course, there were bugs as well, and one of those, one of the disks was working non-stable. There were some problems like slow work, and, uh, but it's the whole cluster normally which uh, works slowly uh, or getting stuck and, uh, and we couldn't understand what was that but our suspicion was that only one of the disks is the problem so when you switch off the, this disk which works in the wrong way then everything is settled also we had blackouts uh, power supply interruption, and uh, also we, ha we could we had to switch off the cluster, but then we couldn't switch it on again. But the maintenance support helped us 
and this bug was removed. And in operation of the system, we still have the human factor problem. So the admin, if he's not careful when using the dog chunk, without checking whether some information is already duplicated to another server, if the backup op is created, then of course, if there is some problem, then the data is lost. So you shouldn't relax. Okay, and now in brief, the summary of uh, our work. So we had six years of uptime, we had uh, around 30 servers. We built three clusters on the six virtuals. We used around 250 terabytes of disk space and we get 80 terabytes of useful space as a result. And uh, uh, 80 terabytes allocatable. Uh, okay, so if uh, you want to avoid working on Saturdays, working at night, and uh, dedicating this time to some really important problems instead of identifying the clusters over them, so you can use Surf or Virtuoso system and you will avoid these problems. Thank you for your attention. Questions? Hello. I'm from Virtuoso team. And uh, so regarding the VM templates, so now we are working on the second distributive uh, Virtuoso infrastructure platform. Maybe you know this one. It's uh, built up on OpenStack, and uh, the problem with VM templates was eliminated. So you don't need to replicate fully, make full copy of the template. They will create deltas, and in principle, it will be very easy. So do you use Virtuoso without GUI, uh, G without GUI? You don't go deep into this UI jungles, but so you use Virtuoso in the following way, right? Like you use our own virtual machines and containers, right? Okay. And uh, so probably you can be interested in our at our option because if you use our VM, so the only limitation is that you cannot use the containers in this case. That's very bad. But. Maybe you are interested in our virtual machines. Well, if they are also light, same as containers. Yeah, they are lightweight, really lightweight. And uh, actually, part of the problems, architectural problems, are resolved within this solution. Thank you. Thank you. So it's quite interesting that SDIQR, you have such interesting technical issues, but well, getting coming back to testing. So as a tester of productivity, I'd like to ask you, have you ever compared the productivity of systems at SHDL and on rate, physical rates? So what were the methods to measure? So it was very easy. So we, uh, so the time of deploy had to be uh, kept caching, network burning, and everything was adjusted, tuned the way it had to be. And the, the productivity we got was good and even better than we expected. Of course, we didn't use uh, just these ben benchmarkings such a strict way, but we were basing on our tasks. Deployment is very long and heavy. We install controllers, changes every time we have to deploy it and you, so it took quite a lot of time actually. So I'd like to have to specify. So the real situation, uh, like this, for example, uh, the customer measured the productivity of some uh, component, we see what's working well, what's not working well, what are the problems with the hearts, and they have a rate, some kind of rate. So what shall we 
tell them. What would you tell them? How would you answer? Uh, will it be better or worse if I start using S hardware? So how do you answer this question? So we didn't have this particular scenario. I think it much depends on the particular details. Because it, if it's all about like the critical work with the database, then the situation probably is different. Uh, we have quite common type of use. So the database is used, but the narrow net bottleneck was in a different spot. So it was working with the system at the service nodes. And, uh, yeah. Sergey, uh, good afternoon. My name is Gennady. I'm from Novosibirsk BKS company. So we started to use CEF, so we use the system of data storage for microservices. And I have two questions. First question is whether you use the decision you were telling about for microservices and how many levels of virtualization do you use? For example, all the hardware we use is in the form of VMware, and then on virtual machine we install Ceph or something else, system of containerization management. Now we transfer from OpenShift to free uh, Kubernetes, and uh, basically that's the first question. And the second question is, have you ever had to use such SHD means as deduplication and data compression when for testing you had to increase substantially the data volume, I mean uh, the volume of space to be allocated for testing, and how did you use, what was your experience of using that? Did you ever have any problems with productivity? And uh, did these solutions help to allocate some resources when the, that was the only way to allocate them? No, we didn't have this kind of problem. But with microservices also, no. We have monolith and uh, it didn't cause any problem. But uh, another question? No. Uh, the question, when you need, your team need to provide resources, and you lack the resources. For example, when you need to allocate 10 terabytes in order to bring Kahada database to the test counter, and then in order to resolve this issue, yeah. well, but if you have limited resources, how did you do that? Well, we could, uh, we tried to get disks in advance so that we have enough of them. Because a couple of times, for example, we bought four terabyte disks, put them on the server and thought that, okay, we have a new server. No. But uh, when it's switched off, we need a lot of free space. And uh, the whole cluster has no capacity to compensate all this data mass. So, and uh, then we understood that it's not the right way. So, and we tried to distribute it more evenly. That was the trend. So, it can be done by some balancing. And also, there was a question about double virtualization. We are not doing that. We stopped doing that. It was done quite long ago in all servers before all these data storage systems were used. And it's been very in containers. And also we used cluster S. Well, we need X3 disks to get the volume. And also virtualization, which is used at the rates. I think now it's rate 5. And uh, also the next one is SF cluster. So when we counted how much our microservices cost in uh, hardware, I mean in cash, then we thought that we have to change it. But we have a server which virtualizes, makes virtualization and integration, just in one level. Another question. Спасибо за доклад. Скажите, пожалуйста, помимо...
Uh, so, in, uh, along with Ceph, did you have, have you considered any alternative options? I already mentioned that uh, we already did it in one team with Virtuoso, and you know, it on dog food concept, use your own products, and this was a very, very nice system which covered our needs, and we used it. But with Ceph, it was like my theoretical studies, and I just try to understand what are the main difference and how to do it in the best way. So, yeah. And Apache Ignite? Apache Ignite. Apache Ignite. Did you? Well, we also had other ones. I just took the most popular one. We have very big community, self community, and it's developing quite quickly. And I decided to compare it with it. So. Any other questions so far? Okay, as long as there are no other questions. Then that's it.